Gina, let me start with you. Don't you think that President Trump, as the president, should take the high road and, and put an end to this? I mean, if you go to apologize to somebody and as best you tried, it did not go well, uh, don't you just say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that was not the goal in this to make it worse. I think the president has absolutely taken the high road in this. I think that uh, calling this family in the first place, continuing to put himself out there in ways that uh, former presidents haven't done. They've all sent letters, but they haven't all taken the time for a personal call. Uh, what I believe was reprehensible, and I believe that as history reflects back on this moment, it will show is this congresswoman's attempt, uh, calling herself a rock star even, uh, to, to really dance on the grave of something that is so sacred, as General Kelly pointed out, and I'm so glad that he made the statement that he did, and I'm so glad that we've returned the focus to these Gold Star families and like General Kelly's and others. Pete, I'll get you in just a second. Real quick, though, but Gina, obviously his, his phone call didn't go well. I, I agree. He tried. He made the call. Not every president has with, with every uh, uh, fallen soldier, uh, but he tried and failed, it sounded like. Don't you make the follow-up call and just say, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, that wasn't my goal to make it worse. He has not done that. Don't you think he should? I don't know that I trust the words of this congresswoman. I don't believe, at least as far as I know, that we've heard anything from the family themselves. Uh, this is a very sacred personal moment. And the fact that she would eavesdrop on that and exploit it and then call herself a rock star for it, I think that the motives speak for themselves with this congresswoman. Okay, with her, Pete, um, and again, from what I gather, she was in the car it wasn't like she was on another line, but she was on, and, and okay, for her, yes, she points out that the call didn't go well. That's her take, and that's all right. But isn't it time for her to take the focus and put it back on Latavid uh, T. Johnson and his family and the four fallen in Niger? I mean, I, I, I think, well, I, I first have to respond to the question that you asked, Gina, whether or not, you know, it's time for President Trump to take the high road. President Trump doesn't know where the on-ramp to the high road is. He's never been on the high road. He's always stayed on the low road. This guy has a history like no other. We've never seen anything like this where someone running for president would attack a Gold Star family the way he did the cons. And the, and, and the answer that they started it is horrific. Uh, he attacked John McCain's service, and now he is attacking this congresswoman, even though his own chief of staff is backing up exactly what the congresswoman said. So you have to then... Gina, be consistent and say either the congresswoman and John Kelly are telling the truth or President Trump is telling the truth. Not only that, he calls people names, all kinds of people, congressmen, senators, he calls them names. So this congresswoman established a mentoring program in Florida where Le David was actually a member. She helped him when he was young. She knew him. She was there with the family because the family wanted her to be there. We can talk about whether or not she should have reacted the right way, but President Trump should have absolutely done just what President Obama did and what President Bush did before him. Take the high road. Cindy Sheehan is a gold star mom. She stood outside, sat outside President Bush's house for a long time. President Bush understood all about that. President Bush was dressed down by a gold star family in the hospital. President Bush stood there and took it. That's what a grown up does. And that's of course what a commander in chief does. This president is not mature. He has no empathy and he has no understanding of what people who are suffering are going through. It's possible it could have mis been a misinterpreted. He simply should have said, I'm sorry you took it the wrong way and stayed on the high road. Instead, he didn't because he has no idea how to apologize. He's on the record of saying, I will never, ever apologize. Gina, I'll let you respond. And then we have another Gold Star family weighing in. Gina, you want to respond to that? Sure, of course. It, you know, it, it's interesting to me that uh, that my friend here knows the president so much better and all of his motives than uh, people like me who have uh, worked uh, alongside those who know the president very well. And that's not what I hear at all. In fact, General Kelly was defending the president. General Kelly was explaining how he's the one who said to the president that it was very comforting to him when he was told that, uh, you know, your son picked this mission, your son died alongside those who whom he chose to be alongside. And, and those were some of the words that I believe that General Kelly actually helped the president formulate for these most difficult of phone calls that this president, again, puts himself out there to make, so repeatedly puts lie? himself out there in ways why that, excuse me, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you in ways that President Obama simply did not do. Now, oh. the fact that this president 
is being criticized by the left is just more of the same of the way that they lost the election in 2020. So if they, I'm sorry, in, in uh, the last election, and if they continue uh, to act this way and to exploit our mm -hmm. fallen soldiers, our gold star families, oh. I'm afraid it's not going to go well for them in the next that's, election that's again, That's sadly. grotesque. This is not left. This is not right. Many in the military disagree. Has, the, the fact that you would frame it as a left-right thing, that, that's, that's uh, it's, 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 it's really just There's no cheap. other reason not, you'd be attacking this president right now for calling and giving his condolences to a family. There is absolutely no excuse for attacking someone for calling and giving his condolences to a family, except to exploit something that is private and personal and intimate and horrible uh, for political circumstances. So I'm not the one that defined this as right and left. That happened when the congresswoman decided to uh, exploit the situation and then call herself a rock star for it. All right, there's Why did the president lie, Gina? Why did he lie? Yesterday, his chief of staff actually said he he's the one who told the president to say what Congresswoman Wilson said he said. Why did he lie and say, no, I didn't say because she Why? because she twisted the truth. And you and I both know she twisted the truth. I, I think even she's admitted that at this point. There were there was no lying going on here. You know, the media can try and exploit this how they want. The congresswoman Worth can try and exploit this how they want. This really comes down to a fallen soldier. We are talking about gold star families here. Can we please keep the focus on respecting what is their most private, intimate grief in these times we, and not uh, exploiting it for political? purposes. And let's, I think everybody agrees. Let's hope we can get back to that as we have, uh, uh, forgive me for interrupting, yeah. Peter, we have another Gold Star family weighing in. This is Natasha de Ellen Carr. She released a recording. This is just coming out here of a call from President Trump. She received in April after her husband was killed in Afghanistan. Let's listen to that. We'll get both your takes coming out. Natasha? Yes, sir. I am so sorry to hear about the whole situation. What a, what a hard world to except that he's an unbelievable hero. And, you know, all of the people that served with him are saying how incredible he was. Yes, sir. And uh, just an amazing, an amazing guy. And I oh, just praise that he's a great hero. I want to thank you, um, President Trump. Those words are very kind. He was an amazing man, an amazing husband, and an amazing soldier. And uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of my husband than I am right now, sir, to be honest with you. Um, it's what my husband wanted to do. Yeah. He really would tell me how great. I mean, he's like, he was the leader. He was the, he was the boss. He was their friend. They all loved him. You know, just like you do. I mean, it's just a special guy. Go ahead, Yes, he's just an all-around guy, and um, I, I'm glad that you got to get to know a little bit about him and get to hear a little bit about him, sir. Um, my husband is, uh, to me, he was already my hero, to be honest with you. We've been together 15 years, five children. Um, run down real quick, 2017, 15, 12, and four. My son is currently um, in college in Missouri playing football, so when I say all-around, a hero, yes. And for now, it's like the world gets to know he is an American hero. So thank you. And how, so how good a football player is your son at Missouri? That's a good, he's got to be pretty good. That's a good team, right? Yeah, yes, sir. He's cornerback. He's been playing since he was five. And he got a, a full academic um, scholarship. He got an academic scholarship, not a oh, yeah, sports scholarship? Not a sports scholarship. <laughs> it, it was academic. He's had a 3.7 and above, sir, since the grades could from kindergarten all the way up to 12th wow. grade. Me and my husband, we never had to worry and never had to stress on him doing it. But you just take care of yourself. Yes, sir. Come around and see me when you're in Washington and say hello to your children and tell them that father was a great hero that I respected and, and just, I learned a lot. Before I made the call, I like to learn and, and it's amazing what kind of a guy he was. A couple of the points to make before you guys weigh in. Uh, Natasha provided that audio to CNN, and you wonder, okay, why she recorded her response was a simple one. It's not every day you get a call from the president. So there's that. So, Pete, on that front, you hear that and go, he's got it in him to make a, 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 a call, and there was a nice connection there. Yeah, I, I thought that sounded great. I thought he handled himself. It's very got to be very, very difficult. Uh, the bottom line is people can misinterpret things. Uh, there's, a, of course, another story about a Gold Star family where the president spent 15 minutes with this guy, uh, on the phone, then promised the guy a $25,000 check and that he'd, he'd start a fundraiser. And this Gold Star family said he never got the check. This was back this summer. And they sent the check when journalists started asking the questions. Uh, it's a pretty pretty reprehensible yeah, thing. Debunked. I've never heard anything like that. So it, it, it's fine. At times he's doing a good job. And other times 
uh, people misinterpret it, perhaps, that he wasn't doing a good job. All the president of the United States had to do is what President Obama did when he screwed up and called a police officer a jackass. Remember the beer summit? You apologize. You try to make it better. You don't drag people through the mud. You're the president of the United States. Act like it. Stand up. Be mature and take the pain the way President Bush did, the way every other president has from these Gold Stars families. If they misunderstand you, then you clear it up and you apologize and you uh, that's exactly what you do. It's not hard. That's what everybody does. Well, the story, the story that Peter cited, Mike, was actually debunked. And um, this president obviously is taking the heat. It's not easy to call these families. And in fact, General Kelly said yesterday uh, that when the president asked, should I call these families? He said, probably that's not the best idea because you're taking a risk every single time. And it sort of sets a standard that you're going to have to call then every family. You do, Sadly, we don't ever know how many they're going to be. But the president wanted to do it. That speaks to his character more than anything else. And you contrast that to President Obama, who largely did not call the families of our fallen heroes, who also, when he was asked specifically by a group of families uh, brought back, when the bodies were brought back of their loved ones, he was asked specifically. Uh, he wanted to come and he said, they said, yes, that's fine, but please don't bring any press. Well, he not only brought the press, he released oh. all the pictures after they asked him not to and then never apologized for it. So I'm glad that we have a president in the White House who truly does respect our Gold Star families. And I would think if there were nothing else in the world we could agree on, no matter what political orientation we are, it'd be that these moments are sacred and they're not so much for our intrusion uh, politically. Well, I'll say this, that um, not whether it be President Obama or President Bush, they didn't call Every family, I think, from what it sounds right. like, from what we gather, they tried to do their job. So right. we don't want to disparage I either of them. They uh, sent but go letters. ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead, well, Pete, real just, quick. Got about We've a minute. No, thirty seconds. Go ahead. Our family. I would ask Gina, why did President Trump on the campaign at the RNC? Why did he attack the Khan family? Why? You know, I would ask you, if this is really about our Gold Star families right now and it's not about politics, then why you're bringing up politics when you could instead be giving further condolences to our Gold Star families or giving these sacred moments their deference and their respect that I believe is due. I just don't believe this segment, this topic or any of this is about you and I and the political bombs we can throw back and forth. I would think this would be the one time where we could say, hey, we are united in this. Our our families who gave all deserve our respect and our acknowledgement, and they deserve to keep it sacred, just like General Kelly said yesterday. What about an answer to my question? Why did he attack a Gold Star family? Not once, but twice. And the McCain family. Why did he attack the Khan family? Why? Why didn't he take the high ground he, 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 the way that Bush and Obama did? All right, well, you know, guys, I'm just not going to get on the political defense here, but I will say that he didn't do any of the above. Well, let's hope that the family of fallen soldiers now moving forward. Uh, feel our hearts uh, that their loved one did not die in vain. Guys, thanks again. Pete, Gina, appreciate it. We've got to run. Thanks again, guys.